It is time once again for the Rural Intelligence Report with Mark Williams, RuralIntelligence.com. Mark, nice to speak to you again today. Morning, Marshall. Now, I think we better warn everyone this week that they need to um, take notes because there is so much going on. We're going to give a test at the end of our call as well because uh, there is so much going on and so many places. And unless you take absolutely detailed, copious notes, you'll never get hold of everything to do. But they're all tremendously fun things. So it really is. Summer is bursting out. Well, late spring, early summer is bursting out all around us. All right. Well, we will start out. How about Millbrook, New York, Master Gardener Plant Sale? Yeah, there are a lot of plant sales on at the moment, and that's not surprising because the gardens are really being uh, looked at uh, after the winter. Um, And every year, the Master Gardener volunteers and and the Cornell Cooperative Extension staff hold an annual fundraising plant sale in Millbrook at the Dutchess County Farm and Home Centre. Um, actually, this weekend, it's uh, it's on Friday the 17th at 10 o'clock in the morning, and then Saturday, actually, it starts at 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, anyway, the key thing to know is that the volunteers grow and they sell a, a, a really wide variety of annuals and perennials and vegetables, which I love, and herbs. And they try to make sure there's a real mix of what I, I, I guess I could call tried and true favorites. Um, but at the same time, they usually find some really unusual and exciting and new plants to add to the mix. So it's enough to make you want to go back every year and just check to see that you're up to date with everything. The other thing that's really significant about this is that there's a master gardener booth which is specifically set up to answer your questions um, you know, about the garden and your garden and how, which plants would be perfect for it or whatever. So it really helps buyers make the appropriate plant selection. So that Friday, starts Friday the 17th, and it's on Saturday the 18th as well. Aha. Uh-huh. Now how about this? Berkshire, it's the Berkshire's premier annual pop-up clothing sale and fundraiser. Gosh, it's really in its eighth year? Yeah, um, you know, we we always support it because it really is a, a great fun thing to go to. Um, my wife's a shopper anyway, and so she loves uh, going along and going through the ranks of clothing and, and finding things. Um, there, it's uh, this year. Uh, it starts on Friday the seventeenth, runs actually through uh, Sunday the nineteenth. Um, it's at the West Stockbridge Historical Society. Um, the lovely thing is that there be all, all the clothes um, uh, are usually new or gently used, um, and they're really at affordable prices. Um, the Friday evening, they have their what they call their first dibs shopping party, where you have to pay a little extra to go in to be the first people shopping. It starts at 5.30 in the evening. I'm sure that we'll be there on Friday evening checking through. Now, and the other lovely thing about this is that all proceeds go to a whole slew of local nonprofits like Wham Theatre, which we love, or the Berkshire Humane Society, CATA. We'll come back to community action, access to the arts, CATA, in a few minutes' time. Um, and IS-183, the art school of the Berkshires as well. So it's all in a good cause. And, it, and as you say, it's been going on for eight years. It's, so it's a really a wonderful event. We will uh, move along here uh, and head to Great Barrington, Massachusetts, and also in Lakeville, Connecticut, the final concert for a real long season for Crescendo this year. Yeah, it has been a really long and wonderful season for them, uh, and, and it uh, features uh, – it's a really interesting program. I, I looked at it, and it took me um, about five minutes to work my way through it. So what they're doing is they are featuring a whole different series of settings of the Psalm 116. Um, and I think in total there are about nine or ten different settings of this. Um, so it is an amazing a piece of work from the from the team that you know from the Crescendo's team, um, which is directed by the by Christine Gebert, and it's really she's done a fantastic job, a lot of work this year. 
So there are some people that you some uh, some settings you'll know very well, J.S. Bach or Joe Hanbach or um, uh, Adrian Willett and people like that. Um, but then they have found a whole series of other settings which I haven't heard of before. And then on top of that, they have come and they've arranged for three new musical settings and text paraphrasing for Psalm 116 that have actually been commissioned by Crescendo themselves. So it's going to be a really impressive uh, couple of days. The first day, the first concert is up at St. James's Place in Great Barrington on Friday the 17th. Um, and then uh, I think that's at six, they're both at six o'clock. So that's at six o'clock at St. James's Place in Great Barrington on 17th. And then on Saturday the 18th, they're going to be at Trinity Church in Lake Villa as normal. Uh, again, that's at six o'clock in the evening. Let's move ahead uh, to Rhinebeck, New York. Uh, there's another interesting event going on and Ron, Oblong Books. Yeah, no, Oblong Books really brings in some tremendous uh, authors. And on Friday, the 17th, uh, they are bringing in uh, Alyssa Mastro Monaco. Um, and she's going to be talking about her new book. And it's called So Here's the Thing, Notes on Growing Up, Getting Older and Trusting Your Gut. Um, and it, it really, it, apparently, it's a bold, no-nonsense, no-holds-barred guide to life. She she really tackles the highs and lows of all sorts of things of modern world, like bodies and politics, relationships, uh, life on the Internet, all that type of thing. So she's written that uh, uh, from her own personal experience. But then she went out and interviewed a whole series of other women that are really fascinating as well, including Monica Lewinsky, Suzanne Rice, uh, Chelsea Handler. So a really interesting book. She's going to be there reading from and signing and talking about the book uh, in, at Oblong Books and Music in Rhinebeck on Friday, May the 17th at 6 o'clock in the evening. The Diamant Library has their homegrown plant sale, which is coming up on that day. They are very, very clever, aren't they? Uh, they? They started doing this because they know that there are so many people in the area who are interested in uh, in buying plants uh, for this time of the year. So they've really uh, latched on to uh, trade secrets. And as you say, so in Falls Village, just down the street uh, from Lion Rock Farm, or not that far, um, uh, the David uh, Hunt Library has this homegrown plant sale. Um, and uh, so these the Falls Village's own growers and gardeners and CSAs will be making contributions to this plant sale. They have a lot of, uh, by the way, the thing they do is a lot of vegetable uh, plants as well as tomatoes and things like that, as well as the traditional annuals and perennials and house plants as well. And this year there's going to be a selection of, of gardening books and planting pottery uh, as well. So check that out. If you're in the area, you might as well pop down to the David M. Hunt Library in Falls Village. And it's both on Saturday uh, the 18th and Sunday the 19th as well, roughly the same time as Trade Secrets. So it's a good opportunity to go down there. And another uh, great event which is coming up on the 18th and 19th and, and people up here will enjoy is the Salisbury Artisans Group Market, which benefits local charities uh, a portion of the proceeds. Yeah, this is this is really good because it's um, this is their first spring market, um, and uh, as you say, there's about twenty local artisans who are coming. It's just outside the White Hart Inn, uh, so uh, in in Salisbury. So again, it's quite close by. So if you can wander around the area, make it a day out, um, and go to various events, um, and you can. Check out their website for a full list of participants, but they have a whole slew of really interesting local artisanal products one way and another. And the proceeds support the, the Jane Lloyd Fund as well, so that's good news. Um, it's on both on Saturday and Sunday, the uh, 18th and Sunday the 19th, and again it starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. And on May 18th, the 11th Annual Millbrook Literary Festival. Oh, my gosh. I tell you, we are starting the summer with a bang. Yeah. So this is the 11th annual Millbrook Literary Festival. It really is tremendous. They get I mean, this is also a big celebration of local authors as well. So they've got 40 local authors of adult books, teen book, and children's books, and they're all going to be participating in this. And what they do is they, they have these author-led discussions, which are really make uh, are really fascinating. 
of course, there's going to be all sorts of book signings. There'll be music. Um, some of the authors who are going to be there are Danny Shapiro. Um, the James Patterson collaborator, Maxine Petro, is going to be there. Uh, Andrea Barnett, Joanne Rome, Ramos. Um, oh, there are a whole set. Well, as you say, there are there have been 40 of them at uh, 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 Horova. And it's all set at the Millbrook Library and around, actually. Um, and it starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. And obviously, you can go to their website and get all of the details of the exact times so that you can turn up to get your favorite author to sign uh, a book and buy a few books one way or another. So that's Saturday, May the 18th, as I say, in Millbrook at the Millbrook Library. We've got a gala benefit dinner in Sandusfield on the 18th. Yeah, you know, we talk about some of the big events like trade secrets, and I'm not trying to um, uh, hope no one in Sandusfield is upset if I say that their uh, gala dinner uh, on May the 18th is not going to be quite as big as uh, trade secrets or some of the other events in the area. But on the other hand, I, it's a wonderful celebration of a, a small and really lovely little performing space in Sandersfield. So I thought I'd better mention it. So Sandersfield Art Center really is in the middle of Sandersfield, which is really, uh, you know, uh, put it nicely, is a bit off the beaten track. You really have to find it. But they, but the local population is really art aware. They really make the uh, art center a, a center of the community. Um, and on Saturday the 18th, they are having uh, their spring gala benefit dinner. And the wonderful thing is that it has cocktails and it's, it's followed by a dinner, uh, all the things that you would expect from a gala. Uh, the lovely thing is that live on stage, they're going to have a preview of some of the events that they're going to be having in the 2019 season. So it really is uh, a lovely local event uh, with local people really participating. And so it's a chance to go to celebrate and show your support for, as I say, this wonderful little performance space in, in South County, uh, Berkshire. So uh, it starts at six o'clock on Saturday, the 18th. You will have to get tickets in advance. So uh, do check it out and go there via ruralintelligence.com. A busy day on the 18th. The Litchfield Historical Society has their art show fundraiser. Yeah, well, if you don't know that this year Litchfield will be celebrating its 300th, the 300th anniversary of its founding, by the end of the summer, you will certainly know that because there are so many events going on in Litchfield over the summer. Um, and the Litchfield Historical Society is having its big art show fundraiser on Saturday the 18th at the Litchfield Historical Society. It's, um, it's called Litchfield at 300, no surprise there. It features a silent auction fund, uh, and and it's uh, that what they're doing is they are selling the uh, selling works from more than fifty local artists who um, and who've tried to I think represent Litchfield's three hundred years of history in some of their art as well. So that's uh, really super, and and the proceeds from the benefit will be going towards their educational mission for uh, of the society. So it's a real opportunity to extend learning about Litchfield and what goes on there. So that's uh, Saturday, May the 18th in Litchfield. It's at six o'clock in the evening. So check that out. And of course, make a reservation in advance. On the 18th, let's get back to some music in Great Barrington at six o'clock. Yeah, Close Encounters with Music is having a really big event on um, uh, the Mahewi um, on Saturday the 18th. It's called The Art of the Quartet, and they're bringing in the Escher String Quartet. Um, th they are, have really, Escher is really well known. They've toured very, very extensively throughout the world. They they were uh, they served as the BBC New Generation Artists for some time. They were winners of the Avery Fisher Career Grant. Um, they perform as artists of the Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center. So they really are tremendous. And they are performing Mozart String Quartet number 23 in F major. Um, and actually two or three other things include. And including they will be joined by Yehuda, Yehuda Hanani um, for the Schubert Quintet, um, which some experts, and I'm certainly not the right person, but uh, some experts say is one of the greatest compositions in chamber music. So I think that will be a really spectacular evening in Great Barrington at the Mahewi for Close Encounters of Music. It starts at 6 o'clock in the evening on Saturday, May the 18th. All the way to Ghent, New York on the 19th. 
Yeah, moving now to Sunday, there are a couple of um, interesting little events. As you say, uh, Ghent is a, a, a bit further away, but there's the Hawthorne Valley Wardorf School is really uh, in a fantastic location there. And they've got uh, a talk with the environmentalist um, Alistair McIntosh, which looks absolutely fascinating. Now, Alistair is one of the leading Scottish writers and environmental activists. He's just published a new, new book, which is called Poacher's Pilgrimage, an Island Tour. And it's really fascinating because it, it, he went back, he was born on the Isle of Lewis in the Outer Hebrides of Scotland. And he went back there um, and took a long walk uh, for sort of a couple of weeks through what is an incredibly remote, um, wild island. Um, and during this walk, he encountered all sorts of local people, including poachers and trappers and clergymen and antiquarians. Um, and he talks about this in the book and he explore and he uses really this walk and this opportunity to meet people from the island of his birth as an opportunity to explore the meaning of community um, so it is a lovely, he's a very, uh, uh, a lovely writer and definitely something people might want to attend. It's, as you say, it's in Ghent at the Hawthorne Valley Wardolf School at two o'clock on Sunday, May, May the 19th. And we can wrap things up in Great Barrington on the 19th, the impact of private philanthropy. Yeah, we normally talk about all the arts things that are going on, all the galas that are. Uh, but this uh, is a talk which I thought might be interesting uh, because it's educational as well. And um, it's an opportunity to think about how to give back to the community. Um, on Sunday afternoon, uh, five o'clock at St. James's Place, they're bringing together Peter Buffett, who is the co-president of the Novo Foundation in Kingston, New York, just over the over the river there. And they're bringing together with um, Peter Taylor, who is absolutely a really interesting person. He's the president of the Berkshire Taconic Community Foundation, has really uh, been really making it much more significant in the community. They're based in Sheffield. Um, and they are really going to be talking about how if you consciously place private philanthropy into a community, it can transform and invigorate uh, a local community and its economy. Um, and so it's an important discussion to see how we can try and stimulate the economy one way or another in our area. Um, it's the, the discussion is going to be moderated by David Bodier of the Schumacher Center for New Economics down there as well. So uh, they're bringing together some pretty senior and high-powered people who really think about how to develop community one way or another um, and how it can be done at a, a very reasonable price but and have a really significant impact. So that's at uh, the St. James Place in Great Barrington on Sunday afternoon at 5 o'clock. And, of course, you can check through from the link on Rural Intelligence to get more information. And uh, that will wrap up our show for today. Mark, we'll check with you again next week. My pleasure. Look forward to it, Marshall.